Hey crafty people, welcome back to my channel. And in case you're new here, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd, cause I'm a nerd who loves to craft. I do paper crafting, card making, junk journaling, and mixed media art. Let's get crafting. Welcome back for another Mass Make Monday. This time we are going to do Roxy's Weekly Challenge Week 10. And she was inspired by Wendy at Wendy Journal Wendy's Journal Adventure. Uh, I will leave links to both of their videos before, below because I did actually watch Wendy's video and was thinking, ooh, that's a cool idea, I need to try that, and then saw Roxy's Weekly Challenge where she did a variation on what Wendy did, and I went, okay, that sold me, I definitely have to do it, and I've actually got some variations on the variations. So let me show you what we're making first, and then we'll start our timer and get going. So Wendy used new envelopes and when I saw her video I was like oh I could I could use my junk mail envelopes to do the same thing so hers was just a flap covering a pocket so my first variation is I added a pocket on the front as well so you've got a pocket there and a pocket hidden inside and that's one was using 49 dragonflies digital this is using Rachel at um or a Rach and Bella Crafts Digital. And so you've got your pocket in there. And I should have left a bigger gap here. Um, it should be like a good inch so that it's easier to get things in and out of the pocket. May have to adjust that. And then Rachel's variation was she used window pockets and she left the window on the front so you could see underneath as a little peekaboo. And then you have your pocket on the inside. So this is another Rach and Bella Crafts. This is a freebie on her Kofi shop. This one's the one I don't remember. I think it's Giggle Glitter GFX, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll leave a list of all the digitals I use for the samples and all the ones I'm using for um, creating today down below in the description box. So there's another one. And then my variation was, instead of putting the window in the flap, putting the window in the pocket. So here's our pocket. So you'll be able to see what's on whatever you put in your pocket. This is Fabby Art Studios, and I believe this is Leanna Scraps. There we go, we've got the window. Now I've pulled out six envelopes. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get through all of them, just because with saving the window, it makes things a little bit fiddly. Um, so that might take up time in covering them. And before I came on, I did go through and just trim off the janky bits from opening up the envelope so that I have a clean edge over here. So let's set these guys aside, start our timer. So we're gonna start our timer and get to making. All right, so for this one, cause I really like the big envelope, we're gonna have the, em the big envelope, the big window. We're gonna have the window be at the bottom in our for our pocket. And we are gonna measure up from the bottom. You know what, I'm just gonna use my mat for this because that will make life easier. So we're gonna go up five and a half inches and I am just gonna draw a little line across with pencil. Yep. I'm gonna try and draw a line across with my pencil. And so what you do now is Wendy went in because she was using new envelopes that she had sealed shut completely and she put a little nip in on this side of the line and a little nip on this side of the envelope at her line and then slivered off the edges over here to open her uh, pocket up. But since we're using used envelopes so we already have a side open, we don't need to do that because what you're gonna wanna do now is cut through just your top layer. So not all the way through both layers, just the top layer. So I can do that without having to do the little nips in the side and slivering it open. I can just go straight across-ish. Didn't do too bad that time. I'm horrible at cutting straight. And then I can sliver off the edge just up here because we wanna open this up, which, there we go. And you don't want to open up this side because that would open up your pocket all the way. So that's step one is getting that open. Then let's go ahead and use my mat again. We want to leave, let's put that 
And we'll, and I, this I can fix as we go along because we're covering everything with paper. You want to leave an inch for where you're going to fold. So I'm just going to take my ruler to help try and get that fold straight because my folds were all kinds of out of whack on the sample. And we're going to fold over. And depending on how big your envelope is, sometimes my fold overs are a little on the long side. All right, I did leave an inch. Yep, okay. And that's five and a half, right? Yep, okay. So we've got a really long flap. So on this one, we can decide if we want to fold it up to create a pocket on the front or trim it off. Um, so that, we're gonna, I'm gonna set that aside. We're gonna do all of the covering at once kind of thing. Let's get all of our measuring, cutting, prep work done. And then we can do the decorating all at once. Let me pull out all my envelopes. Because, yeah, I got lots of junk mail envelopes. All right. So let's make that one. That one we're going to use. We're going to do a full coverage because that just is paying the neck to do around. We're going to do those two. That's that. Uh, okay. So this is our other one that we're going to do where we're going to have the pocket showing. So we're going to measure up two. Five and a half. Yeah, my envelopes are about nine and a half. We're gonna go across. We're gonna cut on our line, trying to be straight, which is not something I'm very good at with a pair of scissors. And then take the sliver off of the top half to open up the envelope. Now you could, if you had like a small enough cutting mat, which I actually did that for one of them, is I slipped this mat into the envelope and used it because yeah, none of my cuts are exactly straight. All right, now we're gonna open this up, give ourselves an inch. Fold our flap over. Now, I think Wendy did some that she measured up, I think, six inches. So that is an option as well. Maybe we'll do that on one of the other ones. All right. Measure up. Five inches. So, have you been watching anything good lately. I just finished on Hulu watching Death and Other Details and then I watched Feud Capote versus the Swans. Um, I enjoyed Death and Other Details but then again I love Mandy Patinkin so I'll pretty much watch anything he's in. Um, Except for, like, the last two episodes. I found the last two episodes a little, eh. Um, and I think they're going to do another season of it, which I will, of course, watch. Especially if Mandy Patinkin's in it again, because, again, really enjoy him. But I love a good, like, murder mystery sleuth. It's, it was very Agatha Christie-esque in that you had a bunch of people trapped on a cruise, and someone gets murdered, and Mandy Patinkin's trying to figure out who the murderer is so I enjoy those types of shows I was looking for my bone folder to try and get a nice crisp fold on that and again um I did not particularly enjoy Capote versus the Swans. Um, I watched it, it. It was a show done by FX, 
and they did and it was and it's technically the second season but uh the first season was the feud between betty davis and joan crawford and i remember enjoying that one the pony and the swans was okay i just i was meh. i don't know did, did, didn't love it um and now of course the new seasons are starting up since the actors are all back to work and um, Hollywood. And so I've got my DVR recording things. Cause yeah, I'm still a old school. I still have cable. Um, I just, I just appreciate being able to DVR stuff. Cause, cause otherwise, like, especially if they release the show, not all at once on a streaming service. Okay. And I screwed up because this was going to be one of our ones where we covered it completely instead of using it as the window. And I didn't fold or cut the other ones correctly to do that. So, okay. So for the one where you want the flap to be the window, you've got to measure up going this way instead of with the window because you want the window on the top part, the piece where, you know, we are going to cut open and save and fold over. So we're going to have to go like this. And cut it open like so. And cut our sliver off on this side. So, like, as I was saying, with death and other details, I started watching it, but not all of the episodes were out because some of the streaming services has, have, have kind of adopted, instead of dropping the entire show all at once, they do it like they do. Oof, that is going to, we're going to leave more up top. I should have cut this at six, maybe. We're going to leave more up top so that we have our window not hanging below. So let's go here and see what that gets us. Is that going to get... Yeah, that's better. So yeah, you can, you can adjust these as you see fit to suit your needs, the size of your paper, the size of your envelope. So yeah, we're going to go like that. Um, but all the episodes hadn't dropped. So I went on my merry way watching other things and then completely forgot about it until I was, I think I had seen the commercials for uh, Capote versus the Swan being on Hulu and I was like, oh, I was interested in seeing that. So I you know, went into my Hulu app and saw, oh, look, you know what? Let's do this one at six instead. Let's, let's, and the, the thing there, and look, that's going to, get our window a little less fiddly to deal with. That'll work, there we go. So we'll just leave that all at the bottom part and have pretty much just a straight away for our window part. And again, our sliver. go an inch up and fold. All right, so we've now got all of our envelopes prepped. We can start covering them. All right, for this one, let's grab my papers. So this is a Leanna Scraps Digital, and I found one page isn't enough to cover front, flap, pocket. So I've got two sheets that I'm planning on using. 
Now let's see. I kind of want the butterfly, but I don't want all of that blank space. So we're going to... Oh, all right. For this one, since it's hanging below and I don't want to do that, we're going to add a fold-up pocket on this one. And that is not straight and it's going to bug me. Let me just grab... My little guillotine and just straighten it up because yeah this is why I don't why I use a paper trimmer instead of scissors is because I can't cut straight to save my life and it drives me crazy I'm not even sure that fold is exactly straight try and get it straighter Bone folder. So let's figure out front flap. I want to use this section and I want to have my butterfly on. So let's set it there. That'll work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tick mark there. And a tick mark here, and you'll see why in a second, because I'm pulling out my paper trimmer. You, of course, could use your tearing ruler, you could use your scissors, you could use whatever you prefer. I find it, it bugs me that I have jaggedy cuts <laughs> when I use a tearing ruler to tear it, and that my cutting with scissors is not super straight. So at least for this, now there are some pieces where and I'll show you in a second. I will cut with my scissors, but for now, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna grab our piece back, and what I'm gonna do is apply glue just to our bottom flap, because this is where I'm gonna end up doing cutting with scissors. All right, let me, let me make sure I'm doing it all right. Okay, I'm gonna apply glue just to my flap here. We can fold it over and do it this way. And I'm using art glitter glue. You, of course, can use whatever glue you want. You could use glue stick, whatever. I just prefer art glitter glue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up at the fold line. And glue it down like that. Then what I'm going to do is trim across at the top of the envelope because this way I at least have a guide along the top of the envelope. So there's the bottom of it. And I'm gonna glue this just slightly below that line. So I'm gonna make a mark where that line is so I know where to apply my glue. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna glue just below that line way we don't have a gap and apply our piece so that it goes on like so and there you go and I for these, I fold it over and I find it's, I don't, it, if you don't get it just right, it, the, you get a little buckliness there. So I'm trying to decide if I want to fold over, if I want to skip folding over. I think I'm going to skip folding over. I'm not loving the folding over. So we're going to try with this one to not fold over. And I didn't take off enough of the bottom. I missed my butterfly. <laughs> Oi. Oh, oh well. We'll save that piece for something else. Were you screaming at me that I didn't have it lined up right? I thought I took enough off that it would work, and apparently I didn't. Okay, well, we'll set our little butterfly piece aside. All right, for the inside, now I'm probably going to just make sure I've got, like, that little ripped piece glued down, and this bit here glued down. 
This time maybe we can actually get our butterfly because I'll just glue at the top. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this again with my paper trimmer because I just prefer doing it that way. You of course do not need to do that. I'm gonna make the mark. And I know because we've got the inside flap here, the, the inside fold, I want it a little shorter than that. I'm gonna do that. And before I glue down, I'm gonna take some ink and I'm gonna grab some Distress Oxide Victorian Velvet, that'll work. And I'm gonna ink along here. So that when we don't fully cover that crease, it's not a big deal because it's inked up and so it'll blend in better. And I'm just gonna apply glue. And this time I'm just gonna center up my little butterfly to make sure I've got my butterfly on. And then I, yep, we can fold still. We're all good. And then I'm just gonna use my scissors to trim off the bits along the side. Did I do that? Yes, I did that right side up. Whew. Whew. For a second there, I was like, wait, because that's something you need to keep in mind because it flaps up. You wanna make sure it's oriented this way instead of the same as this one, which would be upside down on that side, if that makes any sense at all. Um, I am going to ink around all of my edges later, <laughs> just to save time. Um, you only really need to ink any edges where you're gonna be gluing, where things, it's gonna be hard to get to later on. Like I should have probably put a little ink on the bottom of that page, and actually I can do that right now. All right, now for our pocket, we've got to do, this one we're covering completely. So I think we're gonna decide where we, what we want. And I think I want it to be that. Again, mark with a pencil. Grab the paper trimmer. it off. Come back in. Now this is going to be our fully covered pocket. So I just need to go like this and you may be able to see, I don't know, I've got a little sliver showing. Um, either I can trim that off or I can just ink it, which let's just flip that over and ink it because then it'll just kind of blend in. And you may hear a dog groaning in the background because I wouldn't let him out because shocking, my dogs were out barking this morning and wouldn't stop. So they got brought inside <laughs> and are none too happy about being relegated. To, well, one of them is none too happy about being relegated to inside the house. Now, since I want to have it go underneath my pocket a little bit, um, I am going to cut it off a little, I'm gonna give myself some extra before I trim off. And so let's just trim that. I'm gonna use my smaller trimmer for that. Cause yeah, I just need to slice off a little there at the bottom to make this a little bit more manageable. Then what I can do is figure out, mm, let's see what, I'm trying to remember how I did this 
when I was working on the samples last night, I think what I did was I went like, so let's put a little mark right there. Cut it off. And what we can do now is attach this piece up top. Yeah, that's the one nice thing with um, using your junk mail used envelopes is it's a lot easier, you know, when it's not a junk mail envelope, this side's still sealed, so you gotta wedge whatever you're putting on inside. This one I can just lift the flap up, squish it over as far as I can go, making sure I stay below the fold line. There we go. And then this piece will go on like so. And I do have a little bit of unstraightness over here that I will try and trim off. Um, sticking up. Yeesh, this is taking a while and I'm really slow at this. Ooh. Put that on like so. Yeah, and these are never quite straight. I always end up having some gappy bits, but that's all right. I can cover that with ink. As I've said before, distress inks cover a multitude of sins. So like there's white showing along this edge. I will just ink that with ink and it'll hide that. We've got a little bit on the bottom yet. So just be careful when you're trimming up that you don't cut open your envelope. And we've got a bit over here that's not glued down. So let's glue that down. So you will want to check your envelope, make sure everything's glued down nicely still. All right, I'm going to put a little notch in here and we're going to use a one and a half inch circle punch because that's what I got handy. And I'm just going to slip that in, take a little divot out there you go you can see the flower there i'm gonna ink this edge because it'll be more difficult to do once i glue the pocket closed and we're gonna glue the pocket closed so i'm gonna run ink on this side so i know how high up i need to go just run a little sliver down press down and there we go we've got a pocket with a flap. Oh, and we've got to glue down this pocket. Let's just do a little ink along here. I'm not going to divot this one. Um, so let's just go a little bit of glue there, a little bit of glue there. Close it up. And yeah, I need to ink around edges just to make sure there's no white bits showing. But there's our first one. Oof. <laughs> and we may get one more done. Really want to show you um, both of the variations. So let's make sure we do that one and that one. All right, so for this variation, uh, this is on My Porch Prints Digital. What I am gonna do for my front piece is, let's do, I am gonna take, now I know Roxy created, or Rachel created templates. Um, I prefer just doing carbon paper underneath my envelope. And I'm gonna, now this is not gonna necessarily be perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that. 
Genau. Mark this. And we're gonna, and I'm also gonna mark this. And now I've got both puppies getting antsy pantsy butts. Um, I think, nope, it's just the one and it sounds like he's in multiple places at once for some reason. All right, we're gonna trim. down this way. I'm going to see if I can find my pencil mark. Just gonna trim there. I think that's below my pencil mark, but that's okay. And now what I'm gonna do is take my scissors and trim away. my window piece, because I like keeping the curve, and apparently I didn't do a very good job at the top of this, so kind of winging it, so we're, we're gonna see how good I did cutting out my window. And then when I put it on, I line it up to the window. I figure I can trim everything else off, but what I want is to make sure I'm lined up against the window, and we got, and nope, we've got to we've got to stay down here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna grab some scorched timber distress ink. Open this sucker up. Ink along here to cover this up. And I may decorate later and cover any you know like there's some writing that might be showing. I will do that. And then down here we've got the spot where it's got a little extra envelope bit on our curve. Actually, we can trim that off. Look at that. Let's just trim that straight. And so I'm also going to do, just in case, around the envelope, around the window on this side. And on the inside of the envelope, or, or on the inside of the window cut in my piece of paper. Ugh. I gotta, I gotta speed things up if we're gonna get to the other one before time is up. I had, I had some concerns when I was practicing this. I'm like, I'm not sure how many I'm gonna be able to get done in 45 minutes. Um, with this one, cause yeah, when you're cutting out the windows, it takes a bit of time. You could also, instead of doing this, just collage around the window um, because that would potentially take less time than making sure you have it perfectly lined up with a cut out like so. And then let's trim off our excess now. And grab our next piece. All right, we're just gonna use this piece. I'm gonna set this down, and again, I'm gonna grab my carbon paper. Theoretically, I'm gonna grab my carbon paper. I'm gonna lay it down just so that I can see where I'm lining up, because I can see the bottom of the paper. And let's do that, and I'm gonna scooch it in just a smidge, give myself a little bit more space to wiggle around with once we cut out. And then again, trace the window. And then I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna give myself a little extra this time, mark there. Use my paper trimmer to trim it down. Got 
Get the winner out. Don't know why that's so not straight, but we'll see in a sec when we put it back in place. And I did it this way. So, oh no, right side up, excellent. All right, one thing I'm just gonna double check before we glue down is to make sure, oof, I don't have a ton of white showing, which I do. Let's see if we can finagle this better. Let's see how it looks. Just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do on this one, because I can't really, ink there at all is do this so that if any thing doesn't line up perfectly it's covered that'll go like so and again I'm gonna do here Glue all around. I'm not too worried about that not being glued down because we're putting a piece of paper over it, so it's gonna get glued down when we glue the paper on. Again, using lining up on the window first as my And I've got, this is a little too tall, so I'm going to fold back and trim it off. Just because I could try and like just go over the fold, but then you're adding bulk on your fold and it tends to get less than happy. So there we go, and again, we're just gonna trim everything off that's overhanging. And it's definitely a little easier if you leave yourself extra for when you line up. And we inked so you can, I can, t I know there's some of the back piece throw showing through here, but it doesn't stand out very much because it is inked. Um, And we've got like less than 10 minutes left. So I think instead of covering the inside of this again, I'm gonna show you what I do for this one. And I think, do I wanna pocket? I don't think I wanna pocket on the front. So I'm gonna lop off a little bit of that just to shorten it. So this is uh, My Porch Prince, and I may be regretting choosing this because I'm going to have to trim it down real quick so that we can actually get it into position where we want it. This would be cool in our window. While we've got the trimmer out, I'm just gonna trim it down this way. Uh, 
I just feel like when I'm doing this math mags, when I get to that 10 minute mark, I'm like, ah, rush, hurry, ah. <laughs> uh, let's save this for the top floppy bit. And then we need, if I had been thinking about this, I would have trimmed this off before I started the video, but too late now. And of course, doing this without my trimmer fully on my desk means I have issues with the bottom section not cutting through all the way. All right, we're gonna do this. Because I want this bit for the front bit of the pocket. All right. We've, we've devolved into utter crafting chaos mode. Okay. So I want this to be what goes on on the inside. And so the inside just needs to get glued down. So I just really need to trim it up so that it'll fit on the inside of my envelope. So let's take that off and that off. Mm. <laughs> Paper trimmer. Uh, this paper is too tall for that. All right. I'm just going to do that. So let's see. How does this, is this going to work? All right, I'm going to sliver a little bit more off of here because I want to get the B in. And a little here. We don't necessarily need to be, be too terribly neat because all we need to do is cover, except I forgot I needed to cover all of up here. Oh, yeah, this is turning into crafting chaos. Oh, I don't know. It is wide enough. Okay. We are going to just put a scrap piece up over on the top to cover the fact that this piece isn't. You know what? We're just going to mark there, cut just below there, and put a scrap piece there. Because, yeah, I cut this sucker down too much because I was so focused on making sure I had my bee and my flower in my window that I wasn't paying attention to the fact that I needed it to cover elsewhere. Again, crafting chaos. So I'm gonna slide this in. So yeah, we can see our little bee and the flowers in the window, I like that. For going over top of this page, I figured let's use, you know what we may do is use this piece. Mm solution oh I'm gonna regret cutting this with scissors <laughs> probably all right so this piece is gonna go on like so and I think I need to trim a little bit more off because we need to tuck it into the pocket to be able to trim off or mark where we need to trim out our window. So we slide it into the pocket all the way over. We slip our Graph paper, graphics. We slip our carbon paper in. I'm like, I know it, I know the word. And we try not to go all over the place, which <laughs> we did not do a very good job of. I did not do a very good job at all. So we're gonna wanna then trim this piece out. And so what I've been doing is lightly folding, not putting hard grease in to get my scissors 
a line to slip, cut on and then slipping them in. You could of course do like an X down the middle, but I feel that ends up wasting too much paper. Like this is a scrap I can use. This paper, I don't know what, I think I printed this on thicker paper than I've been using and that's why I'm having more of an issue getting it to cut like this than I did with the other papers. And oh, that is a jaggedy edge. We're gonna have to, all right, I'm gonna have to do the cut across because yeah, I used the thicker paper. And so it's not moving as easily for me to cut this window as the sample ones I did. Cause this was something I had printed out and was sitting in the stash that I put together the signatures for the bee journals. And this was an extra print, or I, I think I'd printed this, forgotten I printed it, and printed it out again, and so it went into a signature, and then I found this, and I was like, oh. So this is printed on 60 pound cardstock, or uh, copy paper, versus the other stuff, which is 32, and it does make a difference. Because it was a lot easier to cut the windows out on the 32 pound than it has been on the 60. All right, we're gonna clean this edge up a little bit. We're gonna ink it. We're gonna run out of time here in about a minute and a half. And then we are going to line this up with our hole, which, oh, I didn't cut that well mark the top bit that we need to trim off I am going to use a trimmer for that because I'm going to go all kinds of not straight if I don't So before we glue down, I'm gonna put some ink down here just to disguise the fact that we cut this horribly. And we're gonna line up our window as best we can. And yeah, definitely gonna need to add a piece at the bottom because I trimmed this too short. All right, I'm gonna say this one, not my biggest success story of all of the ones I created. The ones I did last night off camera went a lot better. And just do the extra over on here. Let's stop our timer, which just freaked my dog out. Like he just jumped up from laying by the door where he was pouting. And he's gonna wait until I'm done with this video to go out. And then let's line up up here and over here and here and get it lined up as best we can. And I probably should have used Barely Art, which would have given me a little bit more wiggle on that one. All right, so we're good to go there. We're just gonna finish covering this bit up. And then we had a piece from up here that I seems to have lost. I had a piece. Ah, this piece. I figured we could add this piece right up there. Let's ink that just in case we have stuff showing because that's the way it's been rolling today. I'm really hoping this is not gonna be another weekend like last weekend where it was just all kinds of rough with the footage and the filming and it was just like, oof. And let's just go ahead and add our glue. Which is clogged up on me, of course. I'm not going over the crease as straight as possible. 
All right, and then you can trim the excess off. And go ahead and glue the pocket closed. All right, so in our 45 minutes, we got one fully completed. We covered the window part of one and the window pocket of another. Oh, yeah, not my best mass make Monday. Hey, I think what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and go off screen and finish decorating these two and come back and show you what that looks like um, before I sign off for the day. <laughs> Okay, so I went ahead and finished covering the two we worked on on screen. So that one's all fully covered. And this guy's all covered. So we've got those three that we managed to finish completely, well, mostly on screen. <laughs> and then I went ahead and the other three we had prepped, I did those off screen. And so I did one in a Christmas paper and that's by um, Louisa Heinzel. Um, I did this one using, <sighs> I've forgotten now whose paper this is. I'm so sorry. I will leave it in the description below, but the front page is by Rachel Bella Crafts. Um, and then I did one, I used some antique book page and vintage book page, maybe antique. I don't remember this, this book page. I don't remember if it's antique or vintage. <laughs> Um, and I just did a collage of that on this one. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please do all the things that let YouTube know you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.